And uh, as advertised, it's a special uh, 9 a.m. newsmaker this morning. We have on the line with us uh, St. James CEO uh, Brian O'Donovan, uh, St. James anesthesiologist Dr. Isabel Mayer, and St. James uh, emergency room doctor Dr. John Robshaw. I want to thank all three of you for coming on with us this morning. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. Uh, starting out with uh, CEO uh, Brian O'Donovan, uh, let's start with a question about the Canisteo Street location, 411 uh, Canisteo Street. Uh, uh, what can you tell us there? I hear you're getting a lot of questions. Yeah, so so 411 Canisteo Street, as everyone knows, we moved out of there last Tuesday. Um, the operating certificate, our operating license to provide health care services there, has transferred over to 7329 at our new facility. Uh, 411 Canisteo Street right now, the governor, Cuomo, is aware that that hospital is available if needed. Um, Trinity Health does own 411 Canisteo Street, um, so the majority of the conversations would be between those two entities. However, we have stopped decommissioning um, 411 Canisteo Street in case they repurpose that um, in response to the COVID-19 crisis. Um, that's really the information that we have now. Um, everything is obviously changing quite rapidly. Um, and, you know, as, if there are updates, I'll certainly provide the community with those. But at this point, um, we, I have heard nothing in terms of if they will recommission 411 Canisteo Street, meaning the Department of Health of New York State. And this next question is for all three of you, CEO Brian O'Donovan, Dr. Isabel Mayer, and Dr. Rob Shaw, Dr. John Rob Shaw there. Uh, your thoughts on the uh, hospital transition uh, since uh, the hospital moved from Canisteo Street up into the old Kmart Plaza in uh, the North Hornell area. We've heard great things about the transition from, oh, uh, Stupid County Sheriff uh, Jim Allard, among others. Uh, starting out with uh, St. James CEO Brian O'Donovan, uh, tell us about the transition. Yeah, the transition went very smoothly. Um, this transition, movement of patients, movement of clinical equipment, as well as other logistical um, concerns and processes, has been a year plus in the making. All of our team members, managers included, as well as our physicians, have been um very entrenched in these conversations. Um, I would like to thank the city of Hornell, EMS, and, and uh, the fire department, as well as everyone else that um, assisted in the move. Um, I'll turn this over to, to Dr. Robshaw and Dr. Mayer, as um, Dr. Robshaw took the first shift in our new emergency department um, the morning of the move. Good morning. The, uh, Hello. Move went, uh, good morning. The move went spectacularly smoothly. And uh, what we have now, compared to where we were just a couple of weeks ago, is a state-of-the-art, very spacious department, which, as it turns out, has been a very large bonus. Uh, the footprint of the new department, is, I think, is about four or five times the old one. We have more beds. We have state-of-the-art equipment. And, and the uh, setups for hand sanitization throughout the department are much more numerous. It allows my staff to give excellent quality care and keep patients at a distance, even when they're in the department, a much greater distance, for instance, than we would have been able to do in the old building, which, uh, as it turns out, is, is a huge bonus. Dr. Robshaw, if I could stop you there and ask you, um, are you seeing uh, a lot of patients uh, since you moved over? Uh, wh what's the patient census been like or the traffic been like uh, in the emergency room over at the new location? The, uh, the census has dropped quite dramatically. We're down to about 30 to 40 percent of what we'd expect to see at this time of year with the standard illnesses that go around at this time of year. And we're in contact with Professor Mike Kamali by phone three times a week with all the URMC facilities, all the emergency rooms, Thompson, Highland, Strong, uh, Noyes, uh, Jones. And the same pattern is repeated uh, everywhere. The, the, the census is down. People seem to get the message that they should stay home wherever possible, stay isolated wherever possible, come to the emergency room for genuine emergencies only. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, that has happened, and uh, that, that's very helpful to our efforts and to the health of the community generally. So that's a good thing that uh, the ERs are not overloaded uh, at the moment, uh, considering 
the uh, COVID-19 situation. Uh, doctor, obviously we wouldn't ask for names, but uh, and this goes for uh, Dr. Ismail as well. Is it possible for me to ask, have you um, seen anyone that's had the COVID-19 yet? Am I allowed to ask that? Yes, you can. So let me go back for a second, though. I, I think it, Dr. Rob Shaw hit exactly on the most crucial point of this is that we want to thank the community. They are very clearly aligning with the social distancing guidelines. Um, we need to, we're obviously still open. Um, we want to focus on those patients that need our help in terms of emergency services or urgent care. Um, COVID testing, as we put out press releases and more communication on social media, we cannot just test um, patients that come in that are asymptomatic. There needs to be a reason to test these patients. So, again, my hat's off to this community, um, the city of Hornell. We have not seen a surge. Um, we are following trends in this region. Um, Strong Royal Hospital is down significantly in ED, urgent care visits, as well as Highland and our other affiliates. So, uh, really, thank you to the community. I will turn this over to, um, to Izzy to answer that question. Sure. Uh, yes. So um, there have been uh, uh, individuals, you know, who have tested um, here at St. James, and we've had positives, you know, and I think this is all public knowledge. If you go to the Truman County website, everyone sees it in the Tribune every night. Um, we do not have any inpatients at the moment uh, that are COVID-19 positive. And, again, I think the important thing to remember is don't let your guard down. We're still 14 days, you know, max from a potential surge in our areas and our community. So the social distancing that's been taking place is only going to make it easier for us as healthcare professionals two weeks from now. Um, and, and that's really the key is to be vigilant here because, you know, the cases are increasing in our area. And if uh, we don't maintain social distancing, we will have sicker patients and, and people who really need critical care. You know, with that said, Dr. Robsha, myself, uh, and the team here, uh, and, and uh, with Brian O'Donovan, our CEO, we've been having a rapid response meetings every other day. So we're, you know, as I shared with you last week, Brian, when you had me on the radio, we're ready and uh, we're prepared and we've, we've thought things through. And, um, you know, you know we're, we're prepared to take care of our community if we do have that surge, but that's not what we want, obviously. We're prepared for the worst and hoping for the best is our um, – our rule of thumb here right now. So, again, kudos to everyone in the community for the social distancing. I wanted to uh, stop the doctors and ask a question, Eric. Uh, where do you get COVID-19 tests? If someone listening uh, was concerned about that, would you go to an ER? Would you go to your individual uh, doctor's offices? How does that work? Hey, John Robshaw, the, the uh, current guidelines are, if you have well, you do not need a test. Uh, there is no treatment for COVID-19. Uh, having a positive test does not change anything that we do. Uh, there may come a time where if we have lots of tests available, I mean, little tens or hundreds of thousands, that will be a screening program where everybody will be offered. But right now, the testing system would not stand that. So there's no tests available on demand. Uh, the tests are reserved for people who are sick. Uh, and I mean sick in the way that they need hospitalization. Anybody that's been admitted currently to St. James with the uh, pneumonic-type symptoms that people get anyway, regardless of COVID-19, are being tested to check uh, their status. Uh, even those tests have taken about 24 hours to turn around. And, and I reiterate, having a, a test done does not change what we do if you are healthy, so we're just not doing them at this time. My, this is Brian O'Donovan. My recommendation, um, if any patient does feel they have these symptoms that are mild symptoms, um, is to call the University of Rochester Medicine COVID-19 support line at 1-888-928-0011. There are nurses on staff there that will be able to take your questions and provide further guidance. Um, the other is the Department of Health which the number is one eight 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 three six four three zero six five. 364 Okay. We're talking with St. James CEO uh, Brian O'Donovan, Dr. Ismail Mayer, and Dr. John Robshaw. Um, talk, let's talk for a moment about the, uh, the transition from old to new, going from uh, uh, the Canisteo Street location to the uh, North Hornell location. Um 
In terms of uh, COVID nineteen, does anybody has anybody showed up for at the old Canastillo Street location uh, for or for for COVID nineteen or anything else, and been referred to go to North Hornell? How's that been going? Uh, it's actually been going very well. So we have a plan, and during our closure plan, we had to have it approved by the Department of Health. So we have contracted with the city of Hornell, who, who again have really been quite amazing throughout all of this. Um, so we have an ambulance on site 24-7 for two weeks um, until next Tuesday at 8 a.m. that will be there triaging any patients um, that show up at the closed-down 411 Canisteo Emergency Department. So far, the numbers that I have are four patients have shown up, which is exactly the reason why we have provided that service, um, to make sure that our community is treated um, quickly, but also that there is transport up to this new hospital. So it, it's worked quite well so far. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment with St. James CEO Brian O'Donovan, anesthesiologist Dr. Isabel Mayer, and emergency room doctor Dr. John Robshaw. Stay with us. The Ryan Agencies, your local, independent insurance agencies. The Ryan Agency employs 15 of your friends and neighbors. They live, shop, and support our community. When you buy insurance from the Ryan Agency, you support local families. Contact the Ryan Agencies today, your local source for all things insurance. Insurance protection you can rely on. Back with uh, St. James CEO uh, Brian O'Donovan, Dr. Ismail Mayer, and Dr. John Robshaw. Well, last night uh, we got an email from St. James about uh, hospital entrance rules and new visitor rules. Uh, can you tell us about that, Brian O'Donovan? I can. So our focus is to keep our staff and our patients safe. And, and one of the initiatives that we've implemented is making one entrance in, one entrance out of the building. The reason for this is we're able to screen every employee that comes through our doors and mask every employee that comes through our doors, as well as our, our patients that are coming through. Um, so we have um, nurses and, and clinicians set up at these stations right outside of the emergency department patient entrance, and every single um, person that's coming in is getting um, screened and then masked as well. Um, the other part of this that every hospital now is doing, it at least in New York State, we have canceled all non-essential visits and all elective um, ambulatory surgery cases. We're still doing um, urgent um, inpatient cases, but you know that has significantly reduced the volume of people that are coming through our hospital and our, our medical office building. You know, from a CEO's perspective, this is very bittersweet, right? We opened a brand new hospital. We want to be busy. We had our schedules completely full. However, our job from St. James, and I, I speak for Dr. Robshaw, Dr. Mayer, and my entire team, is to keep our staff and our patients safe. So we followed every guideline, um, and that also includes visitor restrictions. Um, we Right now we have zero visitor restrictions. We have a couple of, uh, a couple of um, pediatric patients that are able to, to have a family member with them, or there's also special circumstances for hospice. Or, or other um, special needs patients. What I would like to do is turn it over to Dr. Robshaw because we have also um, modified and developed a, a newer model in how to triage um, patients coming into our emergency department. So uh, starting really yesterday, uh, we began a system of triage basically at the front door, whereas normally they're brought in for the warmth and comfort of the waiting room, the registration area, we've uh, had to temporarily put a block on that. We need to identify who has, who potentially has this illness really before they enter the building. So uh, I'll apologize now. It's a little bit more spartan than what our new patients should be used to, but it stops any contamination of the inside zones, waiting room, registration, et cetera. And the, uh, every individual that comes in, whether they're emergency room patients or just attending the hospital for other reasons, it will be addressed at the door to check the symptoms. And if they are, in fact, uh, electing to be seen in the emergency room, there's some basic assessments done outside of the building. We have two temporary uh, but capable trailers set up where patients will be assessed uh, by an RN in the first instance, as they would be on a normal day, and then secondarily by one of our providers to check, again, if there's any uh, real risk of this individual having COVID 
Those that actively need to be seen in the emergency room will be uh, ushered in with a mask on. We're hoping to be able to provide a service where if it's a lower grade of service required that is not COVID-related, that that can be provided briskly in a situation outside of the facility. But if you come in with a heart attack, if you come in with a stroke, if you're really ill, there'll be no delay. That, that system will be bypassed. So if you're really struggling, we'll get you straight in. There'll be no extra delay uh, in processing those patients who have a genuine, urgent need. That's good to know. I'm sure a lot of people will be relieved to hear that, uh, Dr. Rob Shaw. Uh, I wanted to go back to a subject that we touched on a little bit before in the first segment uh, in terms of the Canisteo Street uh, location. Uh, Governor Cuomo has talked, as, as you all know, in his uh, morning briefings about wanting lots of beds. What are the chances that the location on Canisteo Street would be getting uh, out of town uh, COVID-19 patients, maybe he's from as close as Rochester or as far away as New York City? Uh, so I really can't comment on what we could get or prognosticate on what we think would happen. What I can right. tell you is St. James is an affiliate of the University of Rochester. Um, St. James also has a surge plan in place. We could double our capacity if need be. Again, our job is to, to prepare for worst-case scenario, which, which Dr. Rob Shaw, Dr. Mayer, and our entire team have done. Um, I would see more of a scenario at this point of, of us um, if we were to recommission, which is a Department of Health decision, um, helping out Rochester and the region uh, potentially more than New York City. But, again, this is uh, – I don't know what the future holds. Okay. Uh, talking with St. James CEO Brian O'Donovan, uh, Dr. Ismail Mayer, and Dr. Ro uh, John Robshaw. Uh, Dr. Mayor, um, I, I know, you know, and I would, I, I know that you cannot say names of patients and I would never ask that, but, uh, wondering, you know, you talk about everything that's been canceled. Have you, have, are you able to say, have you done and uh, been involved with, uh, any surgeries as you're the anesthesiologist there? Uh, are you able to say, have there been any, uh, necessary surgeries? Yes. So, yeah, um, I mean, business is open as usual for emergencies, right? I think that's the most important thing for the community to understand is as we appreciate the social distancing, we're still here to take care of illness and sick patients, and that's going to happen. You're still going to have your diabetic patient who's not well controlled, who needs some emergent, urgent care, or your patients are going to have an appendix or, you know, a kidney stone and issues like that. So the, from an operating standpoint, we are, re, we are taking care of emergencies. Um, I wish we, you know, we were in a better situation and using our state-of-the-art operating room to do all the other um, things that we can now do at our new facility. And, you know, that'll come with time. But right now, you know, as Brian and Dr. Rock have said, it's about our safety as well as the patient's safety. So to answer your question, we are taking care of emergencies, and we will be doing that. So the community should feel assured that there is a functional, fully functional hospital in place, it's just as across the nation, all hospitals have modified how they're taking that approach. Um, you know, and I think uh, time will tell when we can, you know, start opening up things and, and go back to business as normal. But right now, for the foreseeable future, we need to continue doing things the way we are to keep everyone safe. Um, you know, I shared with you before the, um, the, the way this virus spreads is much faster than the other viruses, and I think that's the key, and that's the only way to slow that down is uh, flatten that curve, as, as you've all heard multiple times from Dr. Fauci and everyone um, on TV. I wanted to uh, uh, ask you, Dr. Mayor, could you remind us uh, how many surgical offices or suites, uh, as I think you guys say in the medical world, that there are at the new hospital? Yeah, so we have four brand new state-of-the-art uh, operating rooms. Um, uh, you know, some of the stuff we have here is, is like I, you know, we've shared multiple times state-of-the-art in terms of high-definition cameras and videoing equipment that allows to do state-of-the-art laparoscopic surgery. Um, our rooms are twice, maybe two and a half times the size of our rooms that we had at the uh, at the Legacy Building, as we call it now, the old St. James. So uh, we have uh, we have a large you know, large suites and well-equipped, and, you know, we can take care of a lot of, um, you know, when we get back to normal, I, I, I foresee us taking care of maybe some things that we, we may not have been able to in the old facility, 
Um, you know, we have some excellent surgeons. We have so much recruitment going on. You know, as, Dr. as uh, Brian O'Donovan mentioned, you know, we were excited because, you know, we have the state of facility and a lot of interest in doctors and people wanting to come to the area. Um, and uh, I think that still holds true, but there's just a little pause on all that recruitment process right now. But uh, as promised, this facility is going to be, you know, uh, shining in, in the region as a, as a place to come for, for health care. As we all remember, St. James used to be and was way back when, you know, when you and I were kids growing up in the community. So there's no doubt that we'll be back there. Sure thing. Uh, we're just uh, winding down on our interview with uh, St. James uh, anesthesiologist, Dr. Ismail Mayer, who we just heard there, also Dr. John Robshaw, and St. James CEO, uh, Brian O'Donovan. Um, a question for you, Dr. John Robshaw. And I hope you're not offended by me asking, you know, it's no secret uh, to anyone that's ever been in an emergency room anywhere, and this is true of a lot of places, if, I, you know, I've heard about the Rochester ER, I've heard about New York City ERs, that they can be pretty packed on a Friday and uh, Saturday night, uh, unfortunately due to uh, DWIs and DUIs. Uh, wondering, Dr. Robshaw, I hope you're not offended by me asking, but are things a little quieter uh, along those lines uh, with the COVID-19 situation going on? Are people staying in more? And uh, in, in that respect, uh, the people who do get into trouble, people with addiction problems, uh, staying out of trouble in that way? If we were to talk about alcohol specifically and the social uh, events that people attend and then get DWIs, of course, the bars, restaurants are closed. Um, uh, the liquor stores are still open, um, and, and a gas station, supermarket still selling beer. So the, the risk is out there. But yes, every across the board, the the uh, number of patients that we're seeing has reduced to uh, seven days a week, not just Friday and Saturday nights. And we're still providing, by the way, full mental ha- mental health uh, capability uh, if you have emotional issues. And there's a lot of what they call psychological morbidity to this kind of event where people just get damn depressed, quite frankly, and, and we have a crisis service uh, 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, and we'll be happy to help out if there are issues there. And uh, without casting aspersions on our younger colleagues, just with the colleges being out, that, that does cut down on, on the number of uh, 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 drunk uh, drink-related issues, I should say, on the weekends, and, and I'm totally okay with that, quite frankly, at this time. I'm sure. We've been talking with... Uh... Dr. John Romshaw, Dr. Ismail Mayer, and St. James CEO Brian O'Donovan this morning. Uh, down to the last couple of minutes, uh, was there anything I did not bring up that anybody would like to talk about? Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, you know, thank you to all the community on behalf of, you know, uh, administration and all those doctors, nurses, and staff here. The number of people who have, you know, texted or posted on the St. James Facebook page or, or you know, obviously me, me myself being local, I've gotten a lot of questions about, you know, we're making masks or we have extra gloves and supplies. So, you know, we appreciate the community uh, getting behind us. Um, you know, uh, uh, we're here to serve all of you, and it makes our job so much easier knowing that uh, people care about us and are appreciating what we're doing. So, I, uh, you know, kudos to our community for, for as always, you know, we're Hornell strong, as we say here, and we've, we've come together in this. So we, we just wanted to thank the community for, for reaching out and knowing what we need and and. Right now, it's social distancing is the most important, so we, we thank you all. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think the only thing that I would say, if you know a healthcare worker, they're coming in here every day. The majority of the community is staying home. Thank them. It, it will go a long way. St. James CEO uh, Brian O'Donovan with the last word there. We also heard in there uh, Dr. Ismail Mayer and uh, Dr. John Robshaw. I want to thank uh, all three of you for taking uh, time out of your busy schedule and coming on with us this morning. And anytime any of you want to come on, uh, just give me a call at the radio station or at uh, home or send me an email. Uh, you all have my contact information. I want to thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks, Thanks for having us, Brian. It's AM 1480 WLEA Hornell. And uh, Mayor John Buckley was uh, going to come on uh, in that segment. Uh, and uh, the mayor will be coming up. Uh, things got changed around a little bit. The mayor will be coming up at uh, 930.